So we'll look at my standard metric. Don't worry about it. No, no, that's for sure. Oh, no, no. Okay, I guess we're ready to start. Sign. Okay. All right, welcome to the Focus Art Commission hearing. Um, welcome. I guess we should introduce ourselves and we'll yeah. start up by advance and chair. Uh, Hi, Mary Gray. Hello, Matthew Moore. Uh, Lisa McLennan. And Ryan um, I have just lost my agenda because I see some of the the bottom. You go back over to the top. Got it? Um, thank you. Uh, next hearing will be Wednesday, September 15th. 30 here in this building. Um, so at this time, I think that's where in the staff and applicants um, you um, swear to tell the truth, and that would be for you, Lori and Dan Gore. And, uh, great, thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, introduced you already. Um, so I'll couple of the minutes from last meeting. I hope you've had a chance to look at them. Um, and I'll take a motion and questions if you have them. Motion for approval. Okay, Lisa? I second. All right. Any questions about them? Are we in favor? I thank you. So we can get ready right away. Okay, great. Um, hey, let me look. Yeah. I'm used to sharing, staring on a screen as I'm talking to people, so I'm just going to have my presentation up here. Open up the screen. Okay, so Caitlin Dunn is here from the Short North Alliance. She was last here. On May 19th, for a full public discussion about Summer Spray 2. Um, this is the second year that they've done this project, and she came to the commission for actually, um, it wasn't a preliminary project discussion, it was approval of the location, which is that big uh, sidewalk area behind the cap uh, between the park and uh, uh, Goodale Street. And uh, for the commission to approve the artist selection process. Um, and the commission through both of those items. Um, since that time, they uh, selected the artist finals for the project and the materials have been updated um, in uh, online. So the materials that you have right now, it can go into the summer spray um, folder. And go uh, into the um, second item on the, in the folder. Um, you'll see exactly what's up on the screen behind us, which is the updated material, which has the order within which the artist will be doing their work. So, so, so with that, I'm going to keep on. Thanks, Lindsay. Give us so I don't think I had to give an overview of summer spray again, because I think everyone's first on summer spray. So excitingly, we did get funded to do 10 artists again this year. At the last time I spoke to you, we were kind of in between six and 10. So we did get enough for 10. Um, so all if you want to keep going down on that presentation, you can, but I'll just read um, our 10 selected artists. Andrea Myers, Sarah Hout, Nicholas Chouquet, Hakeem Colwood, Felicia Dunson, 
Lance Johnson, Adiel Pequero, Kalia Carr, Derek Callender, and Rob Williams. Um, we're very excited about the selection. We have um, two, three participants that participated last year, which I think kind of brings some elements of people that already kind of know how this works. Um, we did create um, the order in which the artists were going to um, paint in. And this year we doubled up artists on most weekends. Um, so for August 7th through September 11th, we will have artists painting every weekend. Adiel and Kalia are paired, Rob and Nicholas are paired, Sarah and Hakeem are paired, Derek is by himself, Lance and Felicia are the following weekend, and Andrea is that weekend after that. And honestly, that's just kind of how the artist schedules <laughs> all played out. Um, and then from August 14th through October 16th, um, their exhibition will be occurring. So every artist has their own dedicated weekends. So that's 10 weekends. And again, the order of that was also really based on the artist's availability. Um, scheduling 10 people's summer weekend schedules was very interesting, but we nailed it down. Um, Adiel is kicking us off and we're very excited about that. So we are having a meet. Well, let me also preface because Lisa brought this up last time. We did um, give the artists the opportunity to have their exhibition and their mural on the same weekend or separate it or however much time they wanted in between when they were doing their mural and when they were doing their exhibition. We kind of let the artists decide that and luckily it kind of fell into place um, appropriately. Um, no artist did select to do their mural and their exhibition on the same weekend though. Um, so the exhibition space um, on Monday, we're meeting half virtually half in person with all of the 10 artists. And we will be matching them with their partner galleries. Um, so it looks like now we will have 10 participating separate partner galleries that we're strategically matching with the artists and they will offer curatorial experience and um, just kind of knowledge to the artists when they're setting up their space. And we're kind of being deliberate with that because some of the artists probably have a lot of experience experience already and other artists have not done an exhibition yet. So kind of depending on the involvement that the galleries, how involved the galleries want to be, we're, that's how we're kind of matching. Um, and then they will have their separate meetings and, and we're kind of letting them do their thing. And then Saturday, every Saturday corresponding to that weekend from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m., that's kind of the minimum that they can be there at their exhibition. And then if they want to have a Friday evening thing, if they want to do a Sunday day thing or con or continue that into Saturday evening, they are more than welcome to. But from a like a promotional, we can push it out to everybody that one to four, which is kind of the consistent thing we could say. But as long as they want to be in that ex exhibition space, it's totally up to them. So we're excited about that portion of the project. I think that's a neat element. So I think that's Sorry, Diane. Um, can you tell us the participating galleries? Um, I can tell you who are for sure right now. Um, Hammond Harkins, I believe. Um, Sarah Gormley, Sherry Gallery, Marsha Evans, um, Sharon Weiss. Not cheap. Those are the ones I'm 99% sure are in. And it, I feel like Studios on High might and Brant Roberts might as well. I just have, have not looked at the list recently, but we will have the final list by Monday and I'm happy to, to share that. Yeah. And if for some reason we don't have 10 galleries, we're also um, uh, pre prepared to ask Wild Goose Creative or someone else to jump on board to help as well. So revisit, revisiting from what's this matter more about uh, how the artists are represented and how social media is addressed. Great Ideas, question. But... Yep. So that was a big learning from last year because we had these beautiful tarps that had past work of the artists and their Instagram handle, but we didn't think about that once they did their mural, we were taking those tarps down. So this year we have a separate panel that's going to have a tarp that's up there the entire duration of the project that lists the artist name, their Instagram handle, and the order. So if someone wants to, because we did have this little puny A-frame sign last year, but it just didn't work out very well. So we learned our lesson and we're going to do a separate panel that'll be up the entire year with the installation. Yeah. Yes. 
so technically we say it's like it's ours just for organization purposes but this past year we sent out a note to all of the artists we said do you want your work um and gave them the option to to take it and do what they want with it we still have some of it in storage um and we we held on to all of it um for now just in case an opportunity comes up to to put it up again but the only tricky part with that is we don't have unlimited storage for every iteration of summer spray but our tentative plan is to first offer it to the artist before we would ever even think about disposing it it's it's the artists first but we also like to hang on to it just in case there's a really neat opportunity to be able to put them up again you reach out to the artist. absolutely when we took down everything this year we sent one kind of a like a video of the condition of all of them just so the artists could see kind of what because they wear and tear they're not they're te supposed to be temporary um and we said if you want them, you're more than welcome to have them Two, if we take them, we might have an opportunity to put them up somewhere. And if we do, we'll let you know 3, if we ever get to the point, we have to dispose of them. We will also let you know. And we did have a couple artists take theirs. Back, which was great. Structural. Yeah, we have a new structure. The weather was interesting. Um, so we this year we're putting sides on it and closing it in um, because sometimes people will get back there and store some stuff back there. Um, so we're trying to close it in a little bit and that will also help with the wind, the rain and everything like that. It held up pretty nicely. We did have an instance of some graffiti and we had an artist come out and redo pieces of her board um and that's kind of part of being out you know in the neighborhood um but we were pretty happy with it but once we get those sides on it i think aesthetically it'll just look a little bit nicer um and it'll help with the wind because we did have two instances where like boards on the end kind of flopped down and our our team had to come up and put them back up so they at the, after the first like week they came and doubled the amount of structure that was on the the back of them. So we learn a little bit every week of the project, let alone every year. So yeah, hopefully. Are there any other questions? Comments? Great. Thank you. Thank you. I think I'm staying up here for one more. Yeah, so we're going to do things a little bit out of order. We're going to go right to the preliminary project discussion that uh, the short of the lines that's on the agenda for the Stonewall Rainbow project. So if you have found out this particular project that was handled and you go into preliminary project discussion, pull up the Stonewall Rainbow project media. Caitlin, if you want to talk about it. Yes, you can just start at slide two. So I don't think I've given a general overview. Maury, do you want me to jump in? Yeah. Please. Okay. Awesome. So um, we are partnering with Stonewall Columbus to celebrate their 40th anniversary and to honor and celebrate the LGBTQIA plus community um, in painting a rainbow um, on their sidewalk outside of Stonewall Columbus. Um, which is an interesting project for a lot of reasons, mainly the sidewalk. Um, so we've had countless discussions with um, vendors, other cities, the city of Columbus, and kind of what could be a possibility there. Um, I'll backtrack for a second before I get to the nuts and bolts of, of how we want to do it. Um, but we would select through a call for artists, one LGBTQ plus artist, um, to incorporate the symbolic rainbow of the community 
into a design um, that would then be painted, I say painted with the caveat, on the sidewalk. Um, they would be partnered with a, a vendor that is experienced in this, given the nature of the sidewalk and, and all of that good stuff. Um, if you wanna go to the next slide, please. So just like everything, um, this this artwork is probably going to be um, a, a little more straightforward than some of the other artworks we bring in because um, we really do want it to be very rainbow esque, and I think um, that's what this the city's not going to approve any text or anything like that anyway. Um, so really taking that rainbow design and coming up with their own artistic view of it uh, that honors Stonewall and all they've done for the neighborhood and the city of Columbus. And as with everything, we want it to stimulate conversation, tell the story, speak to diversity, take risks, and level up, um, as in our Short North Art, Art Guidelines. So if you want to go to the next slide, um, this is our proposed site plan. So this is on the corner of um, East 4th and High on the North East corner, um, right outside of Stonewall. Um, in preliminary conversations with the city, um, this is kind of where that yellow area is based. We want um, four feet away from the planter curb, four feet away from that jut out curb, which is about five feet away from the stone where Stonewall meets the sidewalk. Um, and that's to allow for still ADA access um, for visually impaired people to not be distracted by a rainbow and still have a clear ADA path through that piece. So that's kind of the rationale there. Um, so that's, we also would really love the rainbow. I say rainbow loosely, it, it might be something different. The rainbow to kind of carry up the side of Stonewall as well. Um, on that corner, kind of where it looks like it goes, it could go up on a wall there on for East 4th. You can go to the next slide, please. There's a better picture of it. So the yellow, obviously, where we would provide that to the artist and let them do what they wanted with it. Maybe they don't want to use all of that space, which is totally fine, but that's kind of the confines that we've discussed with the city. Um, you can go to the next slide, please. So um, there are two installation options. I think transparently both will work um, and we would love your opinion on what you think is best. We'd also love the scenario of the Columbus Art Commission saying, oh, Either, either we could get behind <laughs> because we're ultimately going to be at the mercy of the city approving on a sidewalk. So I'll tell you a little bit about each option, which you might be familiar with any of these. Um, so thermoplastic is our proposed installation. Kind of the, the, the positives of it is they have a wider color scheme. Um, it can last up to 10 years. Um, it's easily touched up, if you will. It's easily removable. Um, and it fits this specific city specification at, for a non-slip resistant piece. So if we did go this installation route, we would have the artist mock up exactly what they wanted. We would give it to the thermoplastic vendor, and then they would work to install it just how the artist designed. Um, this method is also being used by the city. They are installing some little like sidewalk scooter corrals. I don't think this is a secret. I think this is fine. Um, like scooter corrals where people are supposed to like be parking their scooters and they're using this material, which kind of tells me, hey, they might be more into letting us do something like this, which they've, they've explored the possibility, but ultimately we wanted to come to you first to see what you'd say. Um, if you want to go to the next method. So this is just a, a mix of traffic paint, um, concrete paint that other vendors mainly the Sherman Williams um, it recommended. So Pro Park and he Pro Park is a traffic paint um, that doesn't come in a, a wide array of colors, um, but there is some mixing that can be done. Heavy Shield goes on top of that. And then lastly, this shark grip slip resistant, which is hard to say, um, is then mixed in with the clear top coat and put on top. Um, this is more is said to more have like a life of five years. Um, we could also touch it up. It's pressure washed off, um, like heavy pressure washed off, which also um, begets the question of like, it might be easily wearable with some pedestrian traffic. Um, but 
both of these have proven to work um, in, in not outside of Stonewall on High Street, um, but have proven to work elsewhere in other cities. Um, the good, and you can go to the next slide, please. Um, both of these installation options, I kind of talked about everything that's in there, but um, we'll be monitoring it daily, um, looking at the wear and tear. As I mentioned with both options, there are ways to um, touch it up. And then if it turns out to, to not be something that lasts more than three or four years, we're prepared to have a clear way of taking it off um, if it just doesn't do the sidewalk and stone wall justice. Um, but transparently, I'm more, I, I think the thermoplastic is probably going to be the more um, foolproof option for this, but I also recognize I'm not an artist and having paint as an artist is um, more ideal. I will say that if we do go the paint route, it is still our um, desire to have the vendor be applying it and artists can be there and helping. But in both scenarios, we think it's very important that the vendor is doing that just because of the nuances of the sidewalk. Um, and if you feel differently about that, by all means, you know, feel free to push back on that. But that's just kind of where our heads are at. Um, and I'll, that's pretty much it. I'll pause there. Question regarding option number two. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, so I understand that somebody from Sherwin Williams would actually do the painting. So it's an outside vendor that Sherwin partners with. Okay. Is there a way for us, the organization, to know who that person is? That, as an artist, that would make me very nervous uh, to have somebody come in and, and do my work. Uh, yes, he is who we've been having these conversations with and talking about if we were to go through the project. He also is an LGBTQIA vendor, which is interesting. Um, but we still want to do the call for artists and we still want to go that route um, and have someone actually apply for the project. Um, but yes, I can definitely provide you that information. I don't know if we need it, but I'm hoping that they're taking that into consideration. I'm going to ask what she thinks first. Yeah, right. Right. Many thoughts. <laughs> um, but the main one is uh, I really the, the building can be cleaned with latex. Mm -hmm. If that's the case, why not do the thermoplastic and just make that standard and not try to so the artist can dictate what their design looks like and the vendor can just get so they don't know. So yeah. thermoplastic can be on the uh, wall. No. So they can paint the building. We can technically you can put thermoplastic on the building too, but we would want to paint that building because we're we're it's it's not old brick. It's a it's a new part of the building. Yeah, so I feel like an artist could get there like by our But it's sounds good like the artist is really not gonna that's a concern for me is that the vendor would be painting the wall. I'm sorry, just the sidewalk, right? I'm just talking about the sidewalk right now, and that was unclear. I'm sorry. So the artist would still have the opportunity to paint that entire wall similar to any other mural. That's what I was getting. So the artist can paint the building, and then their design extends out, which I think if they knew that that was a possibility to extend their visual, yeah. they could let go of saying this book is ready. Um, it also depends on how much they're getting paid. And I don't know that off the top of my head, um, but I think it, it. I think in preliminary discussions, it did matter if they were like designing something on a computer and handing it over versus spending those hours actually painting. Very crisp lines. Would there be some advantages? You think at least a frame stickers? Well, yeah. I mean, there's there's many many ways to do it for sure, but uh, but I think more graphic. And with graphic, I just, it's, 
marriage to do a do something I'm excited to see what Garrett's doing. So, let me get this straight. I think you said Sherwin Williams' option, option the paint. The artists can do the painting on the building. On the building. So, the okay. the we're just doing regular latex paint with a graffiti barrier over it on the actual building. So no matter what, that will be what goes on the building. Then option, and then we're just talking about options with the sidewalk. It would either be thermoplastic or it would be the Sherman Sherman Williams Pro Park. Mm -hmm. Who determines the design? The artist. And how is that going to be achieved? So we have our public art commission, um, public art committee. Sorry, I have a lot of commissions in my mind. Public art committee that um, is part of our organization. Um, it's comprised of residents um, and business owners, and Sherry Gallery is also in there. Margaret of Sherry Gallery is also in there, um, and. Stonewall will also be present in there to select that artist. We have a rubric based on all of the short north guidelines that first they fill out based on that. And um, then we'll do a call, select three, and then choose one from those with a proposal. The executive director of Stonewall will be, he'll either assign somebody or he'll be part of the selection process. Correct. This falls just outside of the building falls just outside of these rooms. Yes, and I am on their agenda as well to give them the Tiny Village Commission okay. to give them an update. It doesn't need their approval outside. That is my understanding. I actually just called them back today. Um, I think it's similar to summer spray. We just kind of want to let them know and give them um, anything any, they can say, any comments or. Um, but I don't think that they can not approve it. But obviously, anything they say, we're going to take into account. When they have the design, that will come back to the art commission for the sidewalk portion. But the building will not fall under the approval. There's two setting up the ocean. Interesting. So, Lori, sorry, you said the Victorian Village Commission would obviously have to approve what is on the wall, Italian. but not what's on the earth. Sorry, Italian. Maybe have to cut the words. Down. Yeah. Um, but it depends on the boundary. I'm not sure if it takes a full side of the street or a one side of the street. Okay. Well, I am on their agenda for conceptual um, for the next round. So we can have that conversation with them before. I just have one question. So it sounds like we're for the thermoplastic route. If for some reason the city says, no, we hate thermoplastic, can we explore the paint? Okay. Just want to allow two different channels just in case. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, um, the artist will to match the color bird. He said that there was a little bit of choice on one or the other. Um, so, will there be enough of a choice that the artist can um, make the determinations about color? There are limitations to both options, unfortunately. Um, thermoplastic has more options than the concrete traffic paint. Um, but on the slide, it has um, slide six. It has the preliminary kind of colors that can be used. And I believe those can be adjusted by shade, um, but they have to stay in that general hue. And artists will be made aware of this. Yes. It would be put in the call yeah. as well, and we're thinking with the call that we're gonna have we're gonna lay out both options and just tell the artists exactly what we said here of like we still need to go through some approval processes, but these are the two ways that we want to accomplish this. 
<laughs> on this side. Oh, um, I'm not sure, honestly. Yep. So ideally when we come back, we'll have a design um, and we'll, I'll have more clarity about where the Victorian village, or Italian village um, commission uh, jurisdiction is and we'll be able to communicate that. So the art commission doesn't usually Yep. Yep. Yes, thank you. So the next application before the commission is the Asper Park Public Arts project, which is uh, a mural to be um, assessed that they're right next to each other. Um, CSX um, bridge overpasses over Nishwai Boulevard. Dan Gore is here from the Pazuti Development Company. Um, the Pazuti Development Company is doing a um, mixed use. Neighborhood around where the Cruz Stadium is, is has been developed. Has been developed. Um, Dan is here. How would you like to start? Do you want to? We have two things from um, uh, for Astor Park. One is the um, murals um, that they're seeking approval for, and the other is sharing with the commission sort of their overall public art vision for the. I think it'd be helpful if we could start with the overview, okay. start with the macro and work our way to the micro. My name is Dan Gore. I'm a senior vice president of development with the Pizzuti Company, and uh, we have partnered with the Haslam's and the uh, Haslam Sports Group to develop the neighborhood just south, excuse me, just west of the new Columbus Crew Stadium. Uh, I did. I sent quite a bit of information there, paint specs and all kinds of fun things. But uh, there we go. Right there is perfect. Yeah. So that great, thank you. So this is an image of the um, let me pull this a little closer of the development as it's currently proposed. What you see in the foreground is the park. It's a two and a half acre park being developed by the city. Uh, we've been working very closely with the recreation and parks team on that and uh, coordinating our landscape designs with theirs. Uh, just across the road there, uh, Neyland Drive. You see a number of a collection of buildings. There are residential buildings uh, on the left hand side of the screen, uh, which line the streets uh, 5 story buildings and then at the uh, right end of this development. Right opposite the uh, new pedestrian bridge. You see a new office building a 5 story structure, uh, which is. Um, kind of the anchor and the front door to this uh, new new mixed use development. And then negotiating that space between the stadium, the office building and the residential is a new parking garage, which is being developed by the city of Columbus. Next slide, please. Uh, oops. Sorry, my screen is different than yours. Yeah, so there are some really some key elements here in the neighborhood that, that we looked at for inspiration. There's obviously the stadium. There's this new neighborhood and creating a, a live work neighborhood. Uh, there's this new office building, the commercial uh, use, and then you've got the, uh, the park. And then lastly, and perhaps most importantly, the character defining feature of this new neighborhood is the art 
uh, which is the purpose of today's meeting. We're looking to create a curated collection of public art throughout the neighborhood that features the work of emerging and internationally acclaimed artists. Next slide, please. That's more of the same, so we can go to the next slide. That last slide really just provides development details. There's 120,000 square feet of office, approximately 20,000 square feet of retail, 440 to 450 new apartments in the first phase, 682 parking garage, and then another future phase, which is just north of the stadium at the top end of the plan there, is, uh, is a future development site that was previously um, contemplated to have a 250, uh, 250 more units of residential. The concept plan, which I've included here, I think is important though, because one of the strategies we took in approaching the site was to knit together the beautiful natural landscape that one will find along the edge of the river with the landscape architecture of the stadium and create a really strong park-like setting um, in this neighborhood, which will define the feel of this place and give it uh, distinction within our community. On this plan, we've identified really six locations for public art, and um, we can get into them in detail. Uh, I might just go to the front here and point out where those locations are. Um, so one is at the gateway into the neighborhood on Nationwide Boulevard. That's the, um, we consider that sort of the threshold into the neighborhood. This is a CSX bridge crossing. And there's another Second opportunity and the third opportunity are both on this parking structure. We want to have a preliminary conversation about today as well. We have some thoughts about how that could work, and there's been negotiations with the city's uh, development team, legal teams, etc., about what that artwork might be and how it might work, how it might get paid for, etc., and maintained. Uh, fourth opportunity is a sculptural opportunity of the northwest entry into the Blue Stadium. This public plaza is a very important place for the neighborhood because it looks into the future, and once all phases of development are this really becomes the, the village green and the center of the heart of this community. So uh, we believe that a significant sculptural piece right on axis would go on this freeway, serving as your terminus. If you look down that road, would be really impactful and powerful. So we'd like to talk to you about that. Um, the opportunity we would have been, I think it would have been, is, um, is here in the big park. And you have a, a new kayak. Um, storage facility. It's three sided and it's got wood walls on it, but it would be really great to um, wrap this in a mural and do something interesting there. So that what we're trying to do is create, and I think there'll be other installations, but they're not privately covered. So the goal would really be to create a circuit or a path through this neighborhood where one can see and experience that art, walk your dog, Ride your bike to work. Um, you know, it becomes a place of for more than just a crew game. We want to attract people. We want people to stay, to live, to work, and to be excited about it. So, this is a view of the office building. We've hired um, Getch Partners out of Chicago. Um, the managing principal there is an architect we've worked with for a number of years. He's designed numerous significant buildings in town. Uh, this building was inspired by the angular architecture of the stadium and then the rippling effect of the water uh, as it runs down the Olentangy uh, River right there. Very transparent and open. Next slide. This is the parking garage being developed by the city, and uh, we've worked very closely with the city's team to come up with a design that's complementary to the neighborhood. You can see there on the right hand side, there's a, a suggestion of a mural that um, right now the placeholder for that mural, that colorful mural you see is um, the work of uh, Odili Donald Odita. Um, this is a very aspirational um, suggestion on our part, but uh, 
Mr. Odita is a very interesting artist. He uh, was born in Nigeria, grew up in Columbus, got his Bachelor of Fine Arts, I believe, from Ohio State, and currently practices and works in Philadelphia. But um, is a really talented artist, and um, we think that he um, his work touches on a lot of interesting social topics. It's very um, approachable and interesting and multicultural, and uh, really creates a fun exciting experience that seems complementary to the soccer experience as well as that of the neighborhood. So uh, just a suggestion there, but uh, there's more to come. That is a city owned property. This is the residential building. These buildings are inspired by, again, the angular architecture of the stadium, but instead of expressing that angularity in, in the horizontal plane, they become more vertical. Slide. And then taking that landscape, that park like setting into the courtyard space of the um, residential development and making this all feel very connected uh, to someone that lives in this community. So. Here you have the park again, all of which is inspired and designed to work together in a complementary and compatible way. Excellent. And then here, um, here you have a proposal for the artwork at the bridge, and uh, we can talk more about that in the next um, in the next presentation. Next slide. So what you have here, this may be the it's like we're moving into the part of the bridge presentation. Um, this is a proposal um, to paint two CSX bridges that cross Nationwide Boulevard really mark the boundary into the Astor Park neighborhood. This is the bridge that one would drive under as you're going into the neighborhood. Um, and then the next slide should be the bridge that you would experience as you're inside the neighborhood and the message on those bridges. Next slide. One more. I think there are a few. So back to the garage, yeah. And then if you'll keep going, there's just a few more views there. You get another view of that mural opportunity on the public uh, parking garage. And then again to the next slide. So really lush landscaping, the park like landscaping. And then here, this is the courtyard side of that parking garage. And this is a um, essentially a four story mural. It's a. Um, vinyl mesh fabric material. This material is being used on to wrap parking garages around the country. Um, there is an example of this at John Glenn Airport, in fact, so you can see this in real life in, in our town. Um, but you can print on these, these mesh fabrics. And uh, we would propose to, um, right now the proposal was that we would provide the artwork to the city. The city would then print, have the mesh printed and installed on the parking garage, and we would help maintain that artwork uh, for the term of our development agreement. So um, that's currently what's under consideration. So I think in some ways we've always thought that this being on the more private side um, would have, you know, more of a uh, private would be more consistent with that art being curated through the private uh, development in our collection and that the forward facing piece might be more of a collaboration with the city to arrive at a solution that you know works for the community at large and not just um, not just our development. So, well, if you have questions, I've tried to explain a lot, but um, I'm sure we all and um, I suspect that, um, if necessary, make sure that he understands what you're talking about the concept or the actual development. So, like two conversations. And I do have another a presentation, uh, much more detailed for the bridge work. Um, I can either present that now 
or wait until we've had the preliminary discussion? I think the, personally, I think we should have the preliminary discussion. Yeah. And and then move on to the bridge if you are accepting that. Okay. Questions for the concept? Okay, I'm just thinking about an overarching vision. It sounds like there really isn't that there there's that perhaps there is a desire to bring the various projects together, but that there is a private side and actually collaborative opportunity between the company and the city. Um, I just think, you know, I would think a project like this really, especially if you have multiple installations, to have a kind of curatorial vision is actually mm -hmm. something that I think it's about out of Potential direction, yeah, a vision for the work of how it exists yeah. together. I mentioned earlier. Um, May I yeah. ask a question? Yeah. Um, I believe I understand. Did your question and I know what you're looking for and, and it's a goal of ours to get to that point where we can say what it is. And right now, I think what we're. We're leaning into is this notion that it would be a collection, a curated collection of art that features. You know, the work of both emerging and Ohio based artists, but also. Um, internationally acclaimed artists, and it's important to us that we're able to really set the bar high here and that we're able to elevate the work that the great work that's being produced in our community today too so um we also feel very passionate about the idea that um when you find the right artists while you collaborate with them to some degree uh, we trust that when we found the right artists they should have a certain amount of creative license to explore you know what it is they're doing what they do well. So uh, striking that balance is is really our goal. Uh, so I hope that's consistent directionally with what you're looking for. But. I think I would just want to strive and serve so it's an overarching Um, I'm trying to wrap my head around how what our role is going to be in all of this. Um, so when it comes to determining artists, have has there maybe this is too premature, but has there been consideration as to are you going to be jury? Are you going to be just selecting specific artists? How is were you thinking you're going to go about identifying five pieces? Is it five? Um, <clears throat> I think each one we've approached, we think of differently and we're approaching differently. And, you know, I can get into great detail on the bridge and how we approach that process. It was um, a lengthy one to say the least. And we're really pleased with how we arrived at where we're at. Um, we we haven't really dug very deep into those four other opportunities much, except to say that I know the city will begin looking to us, this team, everybody in this room, for feedback on how the art should be approached on the parking garage. Um, those would be the two next projects. So I think maybe if we begin to tackle them one at a time, we can work through this, you know, I would imagine I'll be back and our team will be back. Um, there's quite a, a group of people working um, behind the scenes with me on all of this that uh, will have a lot of good answers and feedback for you as well. So um, as it relates to the pieces on the parking garage. Um, 
Yeah, this is great. This this piece, uh, this is facing the new stadium and this new road Columbus Crew Way. Um, it's very important to us thinking about the walkability and the safety of this neighborhood, but then also thinking about it on a, a game day when um, you know this artwork needs to be impactful and identifiable. We want to give people a reason to come here. We would really like to see this piece be um, uh, by a well-established artist, if we could, and um, we would be interested in working with you on providing perhaps some names for consideration. Um, if that seems agreeable, um, it is. Yeah. He would be the top of my list. <laughs> um, but we've not we've not talked to him or his galleries or brokers. What is the city's financial commitment in that scheme? Because I see it. You would just like any applicant present it to us, and we would then say, "Yep, perfect." Or, you know, I mean, like, like, so is that not the way this would be? That would make total sense to me, and that's what the the city's engineers and development team who have worked on the garage have asked us for. So they've asked us to provide them with the artwork for the mesh on the inside and that they have to put that mesh up to clad the garage. So they're responsible for that and maintaining the structural integrity of that enclosure and that facade system, but we would be responsible for the maintenance of the art. So um, it becomes a true partnership. We have a development agreement. And even so, if that, if that building is a city building, that process needs to be an open process. As we've talked about at the presentation, so whether you're um, delivering artwork or not, it's still city property, which means it needs to be an open process. Yes, absolutely. And what would and that's part of the reason I'm here today is to understand what you would like from us. So if you'd like, we could come back in September with some recommendations or a collection and talk about those options and discuss them directionally. Um, how would you ideally like to see the process unfold? You know, there are too many types of calls. There are curated calls, but I think if I may, what you're speaking about is a curated vision as opposed to a curated call. So uh, an invitational call, we would isolate and identify a certain artist and then make that call. Um, but if you are leaving it open to um, uh, some sort of invitation to anyone who may be reading that invitation, then, um, then there's that too. So um, I think the strategy of the entire area development and the strategy of how you want to go about to choose artists. And those are the two things that um, we're not going to tell you which strategy you have to take. We're okay. just going to say, as a public um, building, it needs to have some sort of call that is um, uh, designed, create, um, explained to the public so that the public understands, the artistic public understands what it is uh, if they are in or out. They are available. This is an available opportunity for them and I. That's great. And can I get those examples from Lori? Yeah, and I guess um, one of the other things that I would want to snap that would be really helpful is you're talking about with the garage, just speaking specifically to the garage. Um, you have two locations, two different materials, sizes. Um, it's not clear to me what the materials are for the mural proposal for um, Crew Way. I guess it's this Columbus Crew Way. Um, and the size of that, um, there's there's a large difference between I think certainly the size and um, impact between those two murals on the private side and the public side. Um, it would be helpful to understand that a little bit, a little bit better. Um, not having been involved with the discussions with public, assuming you're working with public service and finance departments. Yes. Okay, 
so in, in planning. But I don't think planning has necessarily been involved in the direction of the mural or the budgets for projects, that sort of thing. I mean, I haven't heard anything about um, And this um, is something that goes to the buildings, go the whole development goes to the downtown commission, so we're all clear on that. And the downtown commission doesn't have approval authority over public art unless it's integrated into the the hardscape, the buildings, or the plazas, or something like that. Um, but they do have um, comments. They, they by their by their um, guidelines, they have um, the right to provide comments on art that would come to the commission for the art commission's approval because the art commission has sole approval over art proposed for um, city buildings, city property, multiple buildings. And I have another question. Who is paying for this project? The artist fees, et cetera. Yeah. So in the case of the mural on the um, courtyard side, uh, it's been assumed that if the developer is providing the artwork, the developer would pay for that art, uh, artwork and that the city would pay for the materials and the construction of or installation of that work on the building. So, um, so that was the delineation made. And I think the documentation is currently open-ended as it relates to the artwork on the Columbus Crew Way side. So we wanted to have further dialogue before that was decided. From where would the money come from? You don't have any. No, that would be something else. Yeah. It would be an agreement between the city, just like uh, other Okay, so this would be broad. So then, and that agreement would be with the development department? Or we would have to get into the weeds that yep. right now, but <clears throat> we would have to get into the weeds, but I would also like to just caution you that making sure that the upkeep of that piece is well documented in the contractor path. Yes. Um, so that's the building itself. So I guess just backing a little bit more uh, to my initial questions. Um, the overall budget for the two pieces, the art budget, the um, generally when we talk about art budget, it includes the artist fees and then those are on and around whatever fabrication. So it should be. That's estimated to be for each of those two projects. And again, more detail on um, the Columbus Freeway through the public face of the mural, mm -hmm. which is a much smaller face of a mural than the private side of the mural. Um, so I think if um, maybe what we could do is work through. Um, a preliminary or an outline of this all, if you will, and maybe bring as a goal, bring that to one of the next meetings and then have something to really talk about. Um, I would ask the commission to consider. I know there's a based on the last um, conversation, there's some desire to, you know, consider thermoplastics and other types of applications for the murals. Um, on this particular mural that faces Columbus Crew Way, I, I would ask that we have some latitude um, only because I know that it's very important to some artists that what the medium is they're working with. And those and, the labels on the side yeah, the Okay, okay. Yeah. That was specific to there are certain people that would only use paint, and um, I just want to make sure we have the room to. Yeah, that, I don't think that that would be an issue unless okay. it goes on to the sidewalk. Yeah. Great. The sidewalk, then that that's. Okay, perfect. Safety. Okay. And, you know, also we have done the North Bank project for the jury project. So we have done various approaches. And I would be happy to discuss it for us. Yeah, that would be great. As for the other things that you've got going on, 
walkway uh, segments that would be visual identity or visual excited. Um, and each one of those is its own call. I would assume, unless you have in your vision that you want one artist or a team of artists to look at all of those different sites. Mm -hmm. So, um, because if they're public, we would appreciate a call. If they're private and not like private property, then that's your call. Okay. Decision. That sounds great. Any other comments? But that's helpful and I think I just wanted to also introduce the project to everyone knowing that we'll likely have more conversations and it's helpful to understand um, the boundaries of things so thank you and just as a final comment when you think about strategy for the last so actually there are very distinct mm -hmm. so you know it could be something like that that's overarching for all now I understand what you're asking for better. That's really helpful yeah. because I think in many ways we've already started to define certain strategies based on their location and the size and scale and scope of each piece. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah, it's one thing that the artists um, put a new way to how to shape that space. Absolutely. Very uh, refreshing to just have a call for uh, an artist to really envision a space with you instead of just telling them what you expect. Yeah. Agree. Um, that's what. Um, and do you want to go ahead then and talk a little bit more specifically about the murals on the bridges? Please. Lori, do you want to say anything to introduce, or should I just jump right in? This is actually application looking for uh, final design and placing approval for the murals for these um, CSX bridge overpass areas over Nationwide Boulevard, which is the primary. Um, is this the primary vehicular entrance? It is. Well, there's there's two other, um, but they're very secondary. Mm -hmm. They have already received approval for the Thank you. So, uh, with that, I think you can even introduce the mural project. So, you're looking at um, two bridges um, for mural plans. Correct. Yep. And so, um, if you want to go back. Briefly, I think everybody remembers where this is at, but um, it's really in that space between Astor Park neighborhood and then the larger arena district, which is back to the east. Uh, and yeah, you can kind of see it there. So Clipper, Clipper Stadium's on one side, Huntington Park, excuse me, and then you've got uh, Lower.com Stadium on the west. And then if you go to that next slide, you get a, a greater plan view of this area. And um, we have identified this area quite a long time ago as being an area in need of some, some TLC. It's, um, you have uh, several bridges here that are, are quite old and um, rusting and in need of um, some uh, repairs and cos cos cosmetic repairs more than anything. They have been well maintained from a structural standpoint. If you go to the next slide, uh, this is the face of the bridge as one drives into uh, the neighborhood. Next slide. 
and then this is a procession through so B and C and what you'll notice about this slide if you'll just pause here for a second is um, we're also working with the city um, to uh, Department of Power and also um, uh, Steve Schmidt and his team on just improving um, the lighting quality through here, looking at uh, washing and cleaning the stonework here, just refreshing everything in general and making it feel much safer, more inviting, and a place you know that we would all be comfortable walking with our families. Next slide. Uh, this is a view looking back um, towards downtown from the uh, crew stadium side, lower.com. And uh, as under a separate project, uh, we're working with the stadium to clear a lot of, or with the CSX bridge company, uh, train company to clear a lot of this brush and some of the overgrowth and trees and clean it up uh, considerably as well. So, uh, next slide. Here you get a sense. This is a detail that was provided to the CSX um, for our approval, just documenting, you know, how the mur murals go and the meets and bounds that extends them. Next slide. And then um, Alex Dodge in Astor Park, and um, Alex is a um, is an artist who splits his time between Brooklyn and Tokyo. Um, I'm actually going to read briefly. Uh, he's um, really an incredible guy, but his Work has been included in many important public collections like the Whitney, the Museum of Modern Art, the New York Public Library, the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston, and the Met in New York. Uh, Alex is represented by Sam Wilson of the Klaus von Nixagent Gallery in New York also. And uh, we worked very closely with the two of them on, on um, creating this, um, this proposal here today. So uh, the process was not a um, not a simple one. We started out with a, a set of criteria, like you were talking before, and some of the criteria, some of the things we wanted to do. We talked about not just cleaning it up, but we wanted this to be a fun and playful artwork uh, that would appeal to a wide range of audience, appealing to different ages and races and genders. We wanted it to be happy. We wanted the messages to be inclusive and happy. Uh, easily understandable, but also nuanced and sophisticated at the same time, and also would work well in an urban setting in this in this type of, of environment on a bridge. We did ask um, the artist as well, and and for a number of reasons, we had actually started with a very wide net and looked at approximately twelve different artists. And very quickly began to uh, narrow our, our scope down to just two or three. And for all of the reasons mentioned, Alex's work checked every box in meeting our criteria, uh, meeting the, that, that basic criteria. Um, and so we, we went and asked Alex if he would be interested, if this was a commission he would consider. And uh, he said, yes, I'd love to work with you. So uh, we talked then internally about with the development team and the neighborhood uh, partners, folks that live in the neighborhood and own property, their property owners, excuse me, not live there, but property owners. And um, what would some of the messages be? And we talked about a universal and positive message had to be. We wanted to have more of a welcoming message on the entry as one proceeds into the neighborhood. And then we wanted to have a message of inclusiveness um, a glad you were here kind of message uh, from the inside of the neighborhood as well. So that was really all we gave Alex um, to start with. And um, uh, we're really pleased that what Alex came back with also was um, open-ended and open to interpretation of the viewer. So what I mean by that is that the, the phrasing he came up with, um, and there was really only one, only a handful, but he was pretty insistent. Um, is that the meaning, you know, could be social or political to one person, and to another person, it would just seem playful and familiar and uh, warm and uh, something you might say to a family member. And so, uh, we really loved that sort of nuance that Alex brought uh, with him. The um, 
artwork you're looking at here, uh, there are two, there will be two final pieces that will be owned uh, by the development. And uh, this is the first one. It's uh, both sides of the bridge and it's the proposal is join our crew. And the letters are Alex's process is just genius, but um, he starts with a sketch and then works with a font and then he brings these fonts into a modeling software where he creates a virtual fabric and with patterns on them and he virtually stitches them together to create an inflated pillow of 3D characters, if you will. He then uses a software to layer 3D garments across these objects and models them and shapes them in the computer, sculpts them, if you will, casts light on them to create shadows and on top of the textures, and then exports them to a 2D vectors and works on them in Illustrator to create these color studies to find a pat of color that uh, palette that would be most impactful in that particular location. Um, from that, he'll create final templates, which will be used as a basis of design for these final paintings, which would be installed by Stingray Studios, so a local company that works internationally. This is the proposal for the Columbus crew side. Um, Alex has recently, as this morning, sent me um, a, an update, um, which I can send to Lori in uh, higher definition. I'm just going to walk this through, or you could pass it around if you'd like. I don't know how you'd like it, but uh, uh, I think he's acting and responding to um, to some images he saw on social media and images after the game of people pouring out into the streets. And the view was spectacular. You have thousands of people in Richmond's on Boulevard these rusty bridges and he's realizing the visual impact these have the potential they have his good works had so alex is currently in tokyo um there's a 13 hour time difference so we email him at night we get a response in the morning or we coordinate calls um after hours but um so that would be the update we would submit for final approval as well um, the color is much more saturated and vibrant and feels more fitting um, in this case. Are, are those designed for all four? Just the um, just the um, the stadium side, the west facing bridge, the all together now message. So in each bridge, it's spreading on one side but not the other. Correct. So in this particular example, you see both sides of the bridge. So altogether now would face the um, Columbus Crew uh, lower dot com stadium side. And then the inside is painted largely with that base coating, the base color. And by the way, there are four colors of industrial or four layers of industrial coatings that go on before the decorative paint can be applied um, that meet the CSX standards, if you will. And, and so the concept here is that there would be some fun little Easter eggs and things on this other side, but they would be quieter. So if you're walking through, you may not notice them the first few times, but the next time you'll look up and there might be some eyeballs peeking out at you or this little character that Alex uh, has created in other um, collections that he's done and uh, studies that he's done. So um, he's just that. So his goal would be to, this is the primary proposal. They would install this with Stingray Studios. And um, then, you know, as they get out in the field, there may be an opportunity to add an eyeball or a hand holding a pipe or something, you know, because there are field conditions that might warrant that level of creativity and fun. So. Is the altogether for is that a catchphrase that the crew fans use? Yep. It's kind of nice. So, true for all kinds of things. 
you know, it's It's not. We 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 asked him. That was not part of the criteria, and it was not something that we even considered. Um, the other side, the other bridge, the all together now. He came to us with multiple ideas. Um, this side, he did not offer any options really, um, and uh, we really like the cheekiness of it. And you see the little hands um, hugging these letters in. Um, you'll notice that the the letters themselves have this because they're draped in fabric, you know, which is clothing. It usually covers a body. They have this humanoid quality to them. They have the, the sense of of life in a way. They're animated, and um, so they're they're just a lot of fun. Um, we're very excited about them. He's integrated um, the existing sign there too into the work and taking some fun cues. So. The underside of the bridge will be just cleaned up. Yeah. We are working with the city, as I mentioned, to find a way to light these bridges. That um, is no small task. Uh, there are DOP light poles out there. Uh, we're looking at one option would be to create uh, cast lighting from those light poles, existing poles. I know that the city had looked at um, up lighting from the sidewalk at one point in time and has pricing to do that. Uh, we've also come up with some pricing to attach lighting to the bridge, but um, as you may probably know, the bridge company is not. Uh, there isn't a process to get anything attached to their bridge. They don't care for that. So, um, painting, by the way, is is a process that they do have a formal approval process for. So, you can go to them and ask them to paint their bridge, and they will consider your application just like any other bridge painting project. So, um, will they maintain it? We will maintain it. Question uh, on the reverse of side B, side C, it just has the little red door of a little figure. Is is that it for that side, or might we add more? Um, I think that's generally it. You know, um, I don't know what the scale of it is. Maybe it's a little much more. So close, right? Oh, they are very close. Way. Yeah, they are very close. That little guy's name is Roger, oh. but. Um, and when you get up close to him, if, if if you do happen to look at Alex's work online, it's um, really incredible um, because he, he paints on fabric typically, and so like linens or polyester materials and, and things that have a, a different texture, they just take paint different, and um, you know, and so he'll he'll bring up these computer images that are really tightly developed and modeled and have a really clear sense of direction on these patterns. But as he gets into them, each little detail starts to come to life and they're really fascinating. So they're intended to be more like Easter eggs and little follies. Than, and because the bridges are tight together, there's not a great opportunity to really stand back and, and see something larger. So we're trying to keep it simple. You know, I hadn't thought about it until I got here today, but I would be happy. We would be happy to install a plaque. It would be great if we could do like a bronze plaque um, that, you know, describes the work and commemorates the work in some way. Um, we'll have to um, see if the CSX will allow us to do that, but I, I would imagine we could at least get the city to allow us to do something like that. The pavement, there's got to be an interesting way to do that, but um, we're um, installing a plaque. Um, to commemorate some of the history of the site too, a historical plaque um, in the property. And it just makes sense that we would have a, a plaque for the artist here. So we'd be happy to do that. And it would be nice too, because you could read each about each piece and each artist as you move through the neighborhood. That makes a lot of sense as a gestalt uh, for us moving forward. 
questions for No, I don't. Got it. Thank you. It's exciting. We're really excited about this. I'm not sure if it's open, but I'd be happy to arrange a tour for you. Um, so it's it's wonderful. Um, the bit, one of the neat things about the stadium, this new stadium, is how close all the seats are to the pitch. And um, with 20,000 people, and you have these really vertical uh, walls of seating at each end of the field, and with the um, the way the roof is designed, it, it captures sound. It's like being inside of a giant speaker. So you get the drums going from the crowd in the NORDAC, and it's just, it's really powerful. And, uh, it's an exciting place to, to see a game, but I can imagine the players must just love it. Um, so it's really um, special for any soccer stadium in America, really. Sure. Thanks for keeping up with You're welcome. I would appreciate if you could. Um, Email the uh, revised. Happy to. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So the next meeting is September. Perfect. And all questions should go through Lori. Perfect. Hey, trying to come up with my seats. And I sort of be creeping up. Um, our artist has a meeting at six. She's able to be right now. Um, Is well, that... why don't you take a seat? Okay. We use the project. <laughs> Thank and you. If we're not Thanks. able to um, talk to Ash. Is that okay? Okay. I've been texting with her and she, yeah, she's yeah. like, I, ha I can speak very briefly well, about the project now, but. I don't, I don't know. How do you feel about it? It's a late agenda okay. item. Um, because they were hoping to get on our agenda in August because she was in August and then hoping to start the project in September. So I just got this on to the end of the day. Um, if you would like to talk to the artist, you can just pull her up to. Uh, I think she's doing WebEx. Is that correct? She's on the meeting right now. I'm here if you can hear me. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> um, I mean, we I could call her. Is that something you? <laughs> Sorry. So I think I said it's still kind of new to be doing everything. Right. <laughs> um, I think I think because the commission has seen this before. Okay. Um, hopefully. That's completely fine. Yeah, I mean, I'm happy to do whatever people want me to do. That's what she should do is she put her on speaker. Do you want me to? I could put her on speakerphone if that's. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so my name is Lee Oldershaw. I'm here on behalf of Harrison West Arts, which is a brand new, um, we just got 501c3 certified in June, um, arts group for the Harrison West neighborhood. And I'm also here on behalf of Harrison West Society as well. Um, I do, I don't know how, if there's specific phrasing that you need, but I absolutely promise to tell the truth. And I'm super excited to be here. And thank you so much for seeing us so last minute and for, you know, the, oh, I see Ash. Can can she make noise? <laughs> I I'm I'm unmuted. <laughs> we were in March. March. Yep. Okay. <laughs> um, for the preliminary project discussion at that time, um, Ash had. Um, 
Yeah, she's she's up there. <laughs> um, because the kind of review that we have to do. I also have a PowerPoint if it's something that, but I that too. That's absolutely fine. That's perfect. Yeah, absolutely. Is this the final? This is the final, and it has not changed that much from the original. Interestingly, there's a whole story and feedback in the community so back and forth, but. but um, oh, do you want me to call her for sound? Yeah, she's up on. Webex. Do that. Hey. hey, so we can't figure out how to get WebEx to have sound. So you're now on my phone. And unfortunately, that's as loud as it gets. Okay. Do you... So, um, since it's been a while, could you just quickly okay. Absolutely. Um, okay, so I, oh, there might not be a map in this particular thing. Uh, so this project is a large mural project that's hopefully going to be installed on uh, 315 North on the Allentangy River Trail, just south of 3rd Avenue, like kind of at the intersection of 3rd Avenue and Allentangy River Road. Um, this site, I don't know if, if you could think if you scroll up potentially. Oh, no, sorry, down. There are pictures of the site. So the site is right off the road. Um, there's a very little sort of natural material there. It's pretty overgrown. There are some covered areas of graffiti, so on and so forth. It's a pretty underwhelming area that the neighborhood has kind of had on their radar for a really long time as a site that we'd really like to improve. Um, as you know, Harrison West has changed quite a bit over the last 10 years, and we're sort of now finally in the position to maybe have a little bit more art and, you know, start working on fun projects instead of projects that are more just sort of re restoring our neighborhood. Um, getting rid of a margin factory. So uh, this is the site currently. What you're seeing at the very top is the west side of 315 North. Um, and you can see there's a tunnel in there. And on the opposite, on the lower picture down there, you're seeing the east side of that same tunnel. Um, that tunnel is really, really long. The idea here would be, the broader idea here is to bring some of kind of the short north arts district to Harrison West and to the trail so that when people are going through, because technically Harrison West is a short north neighborhood. So when people are going through, it's like, oh, you know, like, you, you know, you're in the short north. Um, on a more immediate scale, our idea is to install these two murals in September and then the tunnel next year. The tunnel is a little bit more complicated. This particular site belongs to ODOT, but it's maintained <laughs> by City of Columbus bridges um, and roads or sorry, bridges and tunnels. And so it's a little bit complicated on that front. I'm happy to go into more detail on that. I'm just trying to give a quick overview so that Ash can talk. Um, but yeah, they, basically that's the that's the quickie overview of the project. So you're talking about the faces on the we are talking about the faces right now. Um, next year would be the inside of the tunnel. Same artist continuation of this same vision. Um, Ash, is there anything that you want to tell us about? <laughs> uh, can you guys hear me? Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay, um, well, first of all, thank you for squeezing us in. We really, really appreciate it. Um, and no, I'm just, I'm really excited about the project. I think it's, it's really important to have artwork that kind of speaks to the public in a way that um, can relate to people of all ages, because that trail is obviously so public and so um, widely used. I really wanted to have this kind of playful sense of whimsy, but also have something very bright and colorful and um, just just make it a really fun and bright space. Because I feel like right now it's it just feels pretty drab over there right now. So um, that was kind of the whole idea. Um, and then just taking kind of that sense of um, adventure and kind of otherworldly but also tying in things that tie back to ohio such as adding um 
the state wildflower in there and some of the state insects and butterflies and some of the little critters that you see around. So um, that was also kind of gathered from some feedback in the in the neighborhood through social media. So that was something that I know was important um, to be included. And we can always kind of ramp that piece up a little bit. But what you're seeing now would be the the main design. Ash, I didn't swear you in. Are you telling us the truth? <laughs> oh, yes, I am telling you the truth. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yes, I am. I am telling you the truth <laughs> to the best of my ability. <laughs> okay. Um, it looks great to me. Do you guys have any questions about it or questions of Ash or? I just wanted to know about the Harrison West resident beaver. Yes, <laughs> I can tell you more about that in a minute. I, does anyone have other questions no, for Ash? Ash? No. Okay. Cool. Yep, 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 yes. 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 So um, we are. I mean, this is a longer. If if Ash is is anybody else for needed wanting to? Okay, Ash. <laughs> mural site, but it's not my mural for other people. I've got my son with me. We're volunteering today, so <laughs> I apologize um, that I have to run, but I, I appreciate your time. Thank you. you are amazing. Thank you very much. Right. Have a really nice Thanks. night. <laughs> Bye. She wants to get started. Uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. So, um, yeah, so the plan is to, um, the city has very generously allowed us to have them power wash. So thank you very much for the tip, Lori. Um, so they're going to be power washing at the end of August. Um, then we're going to be putting a primer on at the end of August, preparing the site so that it's ready for her, uh, clearing some of the overgrowth. I mean, with the other picture, you can see the overgrowth, but clearing some of the overgrowth so she can easily get in there. And then she would be starting, I believe, on the 12th is when she's currently thinking, but obviously it's going to be pending weather and things like that. But yeah, she's blocked out pretty much the entirety of September and I think two thirds of October as well for the project. And she's going to be working with three, three or four other artists as well, because it's quite a large. She just texted me and I was like, did you need anything? It's quite a large site. As you can see, it's kind of hard to give you a really good scale of what's going on just because, you know, every time we try and show someone a mock up, it's like, oh my God, you can't, <laughs> you can't see the detail. So Harrison West beaver, there is a beaver that people have been spotting right at this section of the river for the last four or five years. I mean, it might not be the same beaver, but there is definitely a beaver or beaver family in there. And so um, Ash kind of alluded to this, but back in march we sent this out on all of our social media we were like you know please give us comments what do people like what do people not like are we going the right direction um and we actually got really we got positive feedback for the most part but very little and the feedback that was more directed was mostly it was two or three people and they said we'd really like to see incorporation of things that are more neighborhood specific so not just ohio but neighborhood specific so um, you, know, you can see she's intending to add a few more more neighborhood specific animals as well into this project. It's just you can't see them because they're it's so tiny. <laughs> but yeah, that's where the beaver came in because you know it's it's something that's very personal to the neighborhood. Everyone knows about the beaver in the area. So there are also some resident skunks that people are pretty big fans of. So <laughs> the beaver is actually in here, and this is, you don't mind me getting up. It's really hard to see, and that's why I'm saying it's difficult to try and give you a sense of scale. Can you see So he's, there is a lot in here that it's kind of a little There's kind of, there's more in there than it looks like because of the scale of the project. Um, but yeah, that's, that's kind of the, <laughs> Kind of where the beaver was coming from, and she's hoping to slip in a few other little, you know, Easter eggs here and there that are very specific to the neighborhood. Not yet. Um, the project budget has been difficult because of the, how we've gone about this project. This is brand new to everybody on the board. This is the first time we've ever done anything. Um, so, as I mentioned before, we had this or a similar mock up in March. We didn't get a great deal of feedback. Um, we were worried about not getting a great deal of feedback because we wanted it to be something that the neighborhood was passionate about. So we spoke to Ash and she suggested doing several different versions of 
potential artwork that could go on this wall, especially the long wall. And so she made four different mock-ups. Yes, which is obviously a very time consuming thing. I think it was exceptionally kind and generous of her, <laughs> um, but it was quite a time consuming thing. And so what ended up happening is we ended up posting a vote, which actually went surprisingly. Like it was really interesting because the first time, as I said, we got very little feedback. And so we were really worried about this. Um, but when we put up a vote to say, you know, which one do people like, we got 391 votes in four days which was insane. So then it was like, okay, well, I guess people do like this project. People are excited. And they happened to vote for exactly the same piece of art that <laughs> we first came to you with in March. So apparently they did like it. They just prefer to vote and don't prefer to like comment. So we learned something, I think. Is it really? Okay, because I, as I said, like we had no idea. We were really, really worried. Really, okay. <laughs> So yeah, so our, our paranoia and our worry kind of led to this project taking a little bit longer than expected, hence trying to go for the August approval, which we didn't realize it was the August meeting. So what we have been doing is we've been talking to a whole bunch of businesses that are hopefully going to donate. They're very pro the project. They just wanted to wait for the final artwork and the final artwork became available five days ago, four days ago. So that's, that's why we haven't got a lot of that funding secured. I'm pretty confident that we'll get it. Um, we currently have $15,000. We have a grant from Columbus Foundation for $10,000. We have a grant from Short North Foundation for $5,000. Um, we have $500 in donations that came from the community. It's just a case of I think we need to button up, hopefully, <laughs> a lot of that kind of stuff before, you know, and I was hoping it would all be buttoned up by August, but this is you know, a little bit faster than that. So that's where the budget is currently in order to have the project fly. We need $14,000. I don't know if you guys looked at the budget in, in its entirety. Um, we have landscaping in there that can easily be deferred to the spring. That's not a problem at all. In fact, it might actually be better to do it in the spring. And we're doing pretty minimal landscaping around there to keep it natural and to keep it in line with, um, you know, the, the kind of conservation undertones to all of it. So we're hoping either well, we're hoping ultimately for wildflowers, and that seems to be something that City of Columbus would also like, which I think would be perfect, you know, because we're trying to kind of echo those you know, sentiments of the trail and sentiments of the ecosystem in the area. So we're hoping wildflowers. Um, the, as I said before, a lot of that work is very kindly going to be done. A lot of the prep work is going to very kindly be done by City of Columbus, so that's not about the chunk of our budget. And we also have a very generous anonymous donor who said that if we can reach that 14,000, they are, <laughs> they are super happy to fund the section that is um, associated with like recording the project and also running the Ash wants to do a mentorship program for four of the weekends associated with her paint. And so they've said that if we can reach that budget, then we're happy to cover that portion of the, the thing. So I, I'm hoping it will go well. But yes, right now we're still still courting people. <laughs> um, are there other things I know I've, there are probably tons of things I've missed. But if you're curious, 49 point, I think 95% of people or something went for the turtles. <laughs> it was a very, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was a really interesting, interesting experience. I've been learning a huge amount. It's like a tech Okay. Cool, cool. <laughs> thank you so much to all of you. I really, really appreciate it. And yeah, thank you so much again for getting me in so last minute. And yeah. <laughs> guys are wonderful so thank you okay. and we're excited so should i do i need to do any more paperwork with you guys should i be sending you um we've pretty much entirely nailed out our um mou for maintenance with the city we just haven't had it signed yet because we haven't had a meeting yet but do you need to see that or permissions or anything like that i'll, I'll send you uh, a copy of what i sent to the road and stuff okay. yeah well, thank you very, very much for everything. Thank you. And yeah, if you have any other questions, please don't hesitate to come.
<laughs> Thank you. Oh, I, yeah, I'm super excited. This has been such a blast. Can we we couldn't tell. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I am. I just like a little more enthusiastic. <laughs> uh, it, yeah, it's just so interesting. I mean, it's a world that I'm completely not used to. I, I'm an archaeologist, so I'm used to. Oh, like, wow. Yeah, not it's not great. this. <laughs> so it's been a really fascinating whirlwind of an experience, and just yeah, seeing a community that I actually get to interact with is just, just so wonderful. <laughs> Thanks for Thank you, Lori, for getting me here. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. So we have new, no new business. How about old business? Um, yeah, um, I hope you've all had a chance to go and see Mark Riddle in peace in uh, short list. Um, we're in on the second Um, it's maybe the, I think it's the, it's the, main, the piece. Um, so you can go in and then sing all the work for the, uh, the foundation or the flint, as Mark would just call it, um, that it's sitting upon and the shape of that, how they did that. Um, so we have to supply down there and see how that come together. Um, the next big stage for that is next week. Um, Lighting finally came in. Everything on electronic has been really slow because of the pandemic. And uh, there will be two lights on either side of the piece that will kind of pop the lights, but there's not going to be any control lighting. Um, but the lighting came in. So Mark will be back next week uh, to work with uh, the lighting designer from Cleveland and construction company to get that, uh, to get the lights in properly. Uh, Illuminating the piece, uh, so that will probably be. I'm not sure what we see here. What to say next week? If you have any interest in coming down and, and seeing any of that, let me know, and I can let you know what the schedule is. Um, it'll be up in a little bit. Close after we eight thirty when it starts getting dark. Um, I'd like to know since I can't put down the August seventh. Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll send everybody. How about that? I'm trying to see it at night. Um. Who's the lighting designer? I don't remember their name. I know they're on the London and Seven Marks working with the four projects. And those little, those big orange uh, blocks that were marking it, or that are still marking it, are they going to stay until they get the lights in? Pretty sure they'll come out the lights in. Yeah. Oh. Well, the LED lights. So, yeah. and, and that was part of the. Um, it's interesting. We got the materials for the piece itself locked down before the pandemic increases on materials. And so we were lucky with that. But then the transportation costs getting it here, like I said, that those were um, a lot higher than what they had been um, quoted initially. And, you know, basically the fabricator, they were really lucky that they were able to secure someone to actually transport the piece from Arizona to the when they were able to do it. That was really, really difficult. I've asked him to take a look at it and let me know um, how much that differentiation was. I'm not sure if there's any money that definitely else for the same that might cost for that. So, um, which he thinks lots of that is happy with it's done. Uh, but I, I want to know it's not cost. Um, so, yeah, August 7th, if you are going to be here, have an RSVP, please do. If you need me to send out the um, to you again, I should have an invitation probably in SMS. Yeah, so it's going to be so fun. So, yeah, I'm um, going to do that. Okay. Now, the Short North Alliance has pretty much taken over the organizing for this, which is great because we have been a long time. Yeah. We just wondered. So there'll be the kind of the dedication and artists and perhaps the mayor will be there or some other folks will be there to talk about the piece. And then um, they're gonna have down at Prescott Park um, kind of a neighbors space with things being sold that are made by those individuals. Um, and there'll be some um, 
trucks that will be there. Um, and then there will be the uh, artist spot, uh, which would be great. And also, I noticed one of the um, summer spray team kicks off on uh, that weekend. So that will be happening in the far end um, neighborhood, um, as well as the gallery hub stuff that goes on. And then later in the afternoon, there will be the artist talk. Um, Matthew will uh, be hosting that with our conversation about that next week. Some of the details of that, but that could be really interesting. Then we will with um, drinks being provided by Seven Sun Brewery uh, up on the uh, balcony of the New space, which kind of overlooks where the art piece is. So that's that way. Please um, RSVP. And um, yeah, so that, that's wrapping up. We actually started a that component. And we started the planning for the design home for the contract at the time of 2017. You know, the developed planning process and then maintenance moved to the artist selection process and got into contract with Mark in 2019. And here we are. There was a lot of you know, I think they just take the time that they take. There was just a lot of engineering and a lot of detail work um, that Mark went through. And then I, the, well, but I think also just to get the piece, you know, the cutouts arranged in order that they needed to do yeah. so nothing would be unconnected. You know? um, and then, right, the pandemic came in, but um, yeah, I think. Well, the design changed so much to um, what we had. Things during the jury, the design and placement. So, yeah, just yeah. kept running into So, he was, that's a really good point. So, he was still designing the piece when he did it. Yes. Before he brought that to completion, the actual designs to completion. So, Mark is nothing yeah. if not thorough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. So, it's, yeah, he'll be coming with his family and, um, I think it'll be a really fun day. Otherwise, it's a nice day. Pictures. <laughs> um, any other comments? Well, that's like live streamers. Or is it just in person? We just planned on in person. Yeah. They do in the um, in the short form of live space for the murals. So I hope it's being recorded. I'll talk to Betsy about it. That's something we'll be able to do. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
um, that the context is equally important that it can't just return to the community without having some context associated with it. And you know, that's just not acceptable. It wasn't really part of the charge of the bear. He gave a letter that he had sent to you by the commission chair. Clearly talked about context for the piece if it if it returns to the community. So um, we I had a lot of difficulty during the pandemic um, identifying and uh, finding representatives from the indigenous community to serve on the committee. Um, Dan Montour, who uh, is a member of um, I, I cannot say his job um, for nation, but um, he works at Ohio State in the International Affairs Office. If I'm not correct. Um, he was able to bring to the committee and, and ask for two additional committee members um, from the indigenous community. And so we were able to uh, bring those folks on. I think that they added a lot of um, thoughtfulness to um, the committee conversations and that as time has gone on, it has become a more thoughtful committee. Plus, um, you know, people have had interests, very specific interests, some folks participating, and um, I think it's been uh, right by to see the thoughtfulness that people have brought to bear. Um, the committee agreed not to meet next month. Um, I'll be sending out some information to them, and um, we also, I think, uh, everyone has come to agreement um, with. My provision of staff, commission members of the committee, that it's not up to the committee itself to write whatever this context is, context is or to design it. Um, but, you know, write that narrative, but to identify the items that they think should be addressed. You know, um, you know that information that should be associated with the piece um, if it's returned to the community. That's really what we've asked folks to do uh, is to really think about that and identify those important elements. And there's, as you start talking about this, you talk about broader issues of um, indigenous concerns and um, immigration concerns um, and immigrant experiences um, you know, that have happened between the 19th and 20th century since the founding of the country. Um, it's a big, it's it's a big issue. There's a lot there and that we're probably not able to address all of those things that we're not going to be able to address all of those that will be associated with the commission that will go with this piece. But, you know, there might be some other ways that the city can continue that discussion after this committee is through with its work and um, other potential future public art considerations. Um, is there anything you want to add? I think that's very comprehensive. You know, I think um, knowing that history, you know, the, pre the, the present is the present, and in the future we won't know, but things will continue to shift and change. I think there was some conversation around, again, we even allow for that, knowing that context determines everything, so that these narratives keep shifting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, and I think you were also really helpful giving uh, things from the idea of who's uh, writing this to. Identifying the information and having that information go to the city's going to hire someone to who's experience with this to write up that information. I have to think about how that information is displayed. It's going to be something like that. Now, the committee um, will be making their recommendations to the Art Commission. The art commission is asked by the mayor to formulate some sort of public process to so they'll be returning their um, recommendations to the full art commission for the art commission to 
look at delivery for us to post. So anyone can still look at these, this stuff over and provide a comment on it to do that. And then we add it up to the art commission to add to that to, you know, to make whatever recommendations on supporting what was received from the committee from that material goes to um, the administration for the office. Should we'll also be sure that we saw the members of council were interested in council members as well as participating. So, um, yeah, it's it's a difficult subject. It's um, you know a lot of folks have very strong opinions about it, but I think that people have come together pretty well. Discussing these issues and hearing each other. There's a subcommittee of sorts that has been uh, put together by members of the Italian public Italian community and indigenous community within themselves to kind of talk through their um, their concerns. It's kind of a place where you know we can hear each other out and the notion has become something. Expressed through those slightly discussion. We just created a um, context outline and bring together information from everybody on the committee. It's very helpful in that regard. And Julian Newhouse Sauer has also helped by doing some back. Background in the history of the piece itself, or the history of um, of, the, of the Italian experience as well. So that outline, I'm sure, once it's um, reviewed and has a little bit more flesh on it, um, I think we'll be asking for you all to to read it. It's fairly inclusive at this. Thanks, Lori. Questions? Thanks, Brian. Yeah, thanks for serving on that committee. Yeah. Yeah, so I really appreciate all of your comments and help at any point. And I, <laughs> I think our my normal need is to do it. And I'd love to be working on the committees you've been on other committees um, and I'm not sure that we have to line them up, but the committee work or this particular subcommittee um, statute committee is going to be, I think, really helpful for our final uh, need and that is to have new work. And I think the artist or arts team we get for the new work is going to appreciate all the work that this committee has been doing. Um, I do have one other thing. I'm not sure if I've shared this with you yet or not. Um, you, I have to look at the date, but we did tentatively set up a follow up business meeting with the former director in September. Um, and yep. it's a Wednesday in September. I have it as um, September 8th. Okay. Do we have an agenda? No, not yet. Um, but it was basically for having to follow up. Um, you know, we've got a lot of things that cost a good bit of money that have been identified for which there's been no capital planning for. So, um, you know, trying to pull funds from available sources and um, those sources are getting slower and slower because of some, some things that are happening at the state house with um, People's payroll taxes and whether they need to they get they're going to be reimbursed um, because they're no longer probably doubling or almost the same percentage of the payroll tax to Columbus as well as doubling that may change. Um, that's the thing that happened in the state house. So that's something that the auditor's office is watching pretty closely. So um, you know we still have um, some work to do. 
the, the statute that he has been putting on the same spending of our duties um, toward, but we still work, I think, toward starting to draft the RFP for um, the city symbols piece. That's kind of dropped a little lower for me because we have found, a, found an alternative funding source for the um, art plan for really looking at the downtown campus because it's a possibility of the new artwork being anywhere in the downtown campus, which is basically City Hall, Broad Street, all the way to Long between Front and Marconi. Um, so it includes that green space um, out just behind you um, between City Hall and this building. Um, and we found some funding that can be used to do uh, hire a um, consultant to work on that art plan um, and would like to incorporate with that the um, conversation that we've been that we have about how to kind of a market study approach some information that kind of goes out to the community and all the arts organizations in a very broad way that might also include some questions and information that can then be fed back into the um, symbols work later on. Um, but the first stage of doing that, the new public art piece is to do the art plan. And um, I think we'll be able to get that RFP drafted. That's the, the next thing that's sort of on my agenda is to get that drafted and uh, we'll talk it through. I'll um, be talking to the lower view and the approach for um, someone to do that plan. Um, You'll have a chance to take a look at the RFP before it's before it's built and before it goes out. That will be the next step is to do that our international start that start writing our plans because we have a body to call it the banner hiding papers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. That's great. Um kind of talked about this through the email, but I'd also like to just put forward, um, would it be a good idea for us to, uh, for a, to um, survey us about the timing for our meetings to make sure that it's um, this meeting and any other the business meetings are going to work for us all. I'm, I'm sensitive to that. This one would be a difficult one to change just because this room is so busy. We start changing this time from 4.30 on this day. It's probably going to kick us into one of the smaller rooms again, optimal for the recording and everything that we have to do. So I'd like to do whatever I can to stay within the stay at 4.30. For this, for business meeting, we can certainly take a look at all right, so that's my mention. Yeah, but I think the business meeting you might have to take a look at it. And it was a lot easier to pop on one X and do that. Where we go. Well, it might not work. We might have to use a director to come to the full meeting. So. All right. No one else has anything else. Seeing as this is like a picture of us all here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just taking a moment. Wow. That's a good one. Can we adjourn the meeting first? Oh, we're still yeah, getting that's, the that's it for Jennifer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. <laughs> I think I'm pretty the yeah, consensus of the truth. Yes. So thank you. And I can take the picture. I'll take a picture with my well, once we're adjourned. Oh, what about Lori? Yeah. 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 Yeah.